Hello world, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be building a custom cursor interaction with an actual working custom cursor so this isn't just for sort of um, like design purposes like it actually works like you can select things with it and there's this nice hover interaction that I built for it to work with links so just like that. So yeah that's what we're going to be building today let's just get right into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is sort of create um, the content itself so that by that I mean like the text and the link box and everything. So for that, grab a div block and as you sort of, if you watched my previous video where I talked about um, using Webflow's blending modes to create sort of an inverted color effect, I made a cursor in that video too. So the structure and the sort of components are going to be uh, similar in this video as well. But the interactions are going to be a little bit different. Anyways, so this is going to be a um, sort of div block called main. And this is just going to hold all our text, like I mentioned before. So a width of 100%, any height of 100VH. I have a couple colors picked out already. Okay, right here, just going to paste that into our background color. I'll put the sort of hex codes to this in the link. In the, uh, in the description box below so you guys can use the same colors but yeah i'm just going to set it to be flex so that everything's centered now instead of here i'm going to have a container and this container is just going to be to hold our text so i'll maybe give this container um like a width of 80 percent and uh, i'm just going to drag a paragraph element inside of it we'll style the paragraph in just a second but i'm going to add some padding so sort of three gram of padding on the top and bottom and a little bit more on the left and the right with 3.5 rem if i can select that there we go okay so that is sort of it maybe not even 80 percent maybe something like 60. yeah okay that looks about right i'm going to also give it a border so two pixels of this sort of whitish greenish color the paragraph, our text actually, so I'm just going to call this text, um, it's going to have the same uh, sort of color. Oh, actually, wait, don't give that class. All right, it's a link, so let's get the link part of it to work if I just click away. Okay, so we have this paragraph element, but I'm going to grab the text link instead because yep, and I'm going to get rid of this paragraph. Sorry about that give it that same class and I'm going to again paste in this um, text color again put it, in it, put it in the description box but anyways so for our text I'm gonna pick a sort of um, this sort of font like that and 2 rem is the size that I'm making it so it's pretty big but only so that we can um, illustrate our point there that's fine our text link not really sure why I deleted that paragraph element but anyways so just use that same class and be sure to check the line height to be unitless and just hit one on that okay so maybe not this much text I'll get rid of some of this okay like that and I also want to sort of put some margin down at the bottom maybe 20 or mm, 1.5 rem of margin at the bottom Okay, and I guess this container didn't register that border, so two pixels of this color again. And that's pretty much all we need for structure in terms of our um, text content. Now let's get started in making our cursor. So again, similar to that last video that I made, drag in a div block, call this cursor wrapper. And this is just going to take up our sort of entire page. And I'm going to be sure to also set this to be flex vertical. So pretty similar in terms of the settings. And then I've, I'm going to hit position fixed and I'm going to hit the full button. So it's always taking up our full sort of screen here. And it's always like covering any other elements on our page because it is a cursor, right? And we want the cursor to be sort of visible everywhere. So yeah, 
that's our cursor wrapper. Now inside of this cursor wrapper, I'm going to put in two things. As you can see for our cursor, we have two different parts. We have the dot, to the thing in the middle, and then we have this sort of outer circle. So we're gonna create both of those. I'm going to start by making the dot. So we'll just call this cursor dot. Okay, and this is going to have a width of mm, one rem and a height of the same. And what I'm going to do with this is just give it that background color. And because it's a circle, I'm going to go down to my radius here and make sure I hit 50%. 50% just ensures that it's always a circle. And then we're going to create our sort of follower here. So grab that. I'm going to call this cursor follower. Okay. Now, where did our cursor dot go? Okay, right there, cursor follower. So this one is going to have pretty similar settings, except I'm going to change around um, the width and the height. Maybe I'll make it like 4 run and give it that same sort of height. And then instead of filling it, so giving it a background color, I'm just going to give it a border. So maybe two pixels of that same orangey color. Okay, maybe three. Okay, and again, to give it that circle look, 50%. And to position it, um, sort of so that they're always uh, centered within each other, I'm just going to set this cursor follower to have position absolute, just like that. Okay, so that is our cursor wrapper. Um, now, if we sort of look at this, we can see that everything's set up. We just have our cursor here. Obviously, it doesn't work but we're gonna fix that in just a second. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my body, or actually any element, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna go to my interactions panel, and the first thing that I sort of wanna set up is to get this cursor action actually working, and then we will get to getting our um, link cover. So for our cursor um, moving, to be start moving, we're gonna grab this page trigger, okay? And uh, I'm gonna do a mouse move in viewport. Now, we need to set two different sort of um, we need to set two different sort of triggers. We need one for the cursor dot, and then we need one for the cursor follower. So um, just grab that interaction again. So first, let's do one for the cursor dot. So cursor dot move, okay? Grab that. And again, pretty similar. All our cursors are always gonna have the same sort of settings. It's just gonna be negative 50 VW to when we're having the X actions and then for the 100% of the X actions. And then when we have the Y actions for 0%, we're just gonna move it up v with the VH, and then we're gonna move it down at 100% with, again, VH. Now, if we sort of preview that, it's working fine. I'm going to set up um, a, another animation. So mouse move, made sure it's in page trigger, right? And this is gonna be called cursor follower move, okay? and just the exact same settings. So negative 50 VW, positive 50 VW, okay? And then same thing here. So negative 50 VH and then 50 VH. Now, um, the sort of effect that we're having here is that this cursor dot moves a little bit faster than our um, cursor follower. And how we're gonna achieve that, uh, that effect by looking at these smoothing settings. So our cursor dot, maybe, um, I'm just gonna grab that, right? Maybe the smoothing for this interaction um, is just gonna be 0%. So like, it's just going to be instant, right? But then for our cursor follower, maybe I'll make it something like 80%, okay? Now, if we sort of preview, as you can see, the cursor dot is moving farther or faster than the cursor follower. Now you can mess with these settings. Um, I personally like it, The I like the cursor follower to be a little bit farther behind, but I've seen um, sort of effects where it's like very subtle, so maybe it's just like, for example, it's just 50% and like it's like really subtle, but it's still there, that following action. But I like to leave it pretty high so that it's sort of um, visible, so maybe 85 would be good too. Yeah, I think I like this. Um, okay. So that is our how we get our cursor effects. But as you can see, even when we're using our sort of cursor, we can still see like our actual cursor, like the white um, sort of default cursor. And we don't really want that to be shown because we want this to act like an actual cursor, right? So let's fix that. Let's grab um, the body itself and we're gonna go into our settings and then we're gonna go down here and hit cursor none. 
Okay, so now if we look, as you can see, there's no cursor anymore, just our one, that, our custom cursor that we just made. Now, um, if we try to actually use this quote-unquote cursor that we've made, right, you can see it is not possible. Like, we can't click on any of the links, we can't highlight any of this text, we can't really do anything. And that's because our cursor wrapper here, um, it's positioned fixed, and it's positioned above this sort of main div here. So what we're going to do to sort of um, allow us to select text and do whatever we need to do underneath that cursor wrapper is by using an HTML embed. So um, I'm just going to drag in that HTML embed element. And inside of here, I'll post this code in that um, I'll put down also in the description so you guys can uh, check that out. But just hit save and close that. Now, if we go in here, as you can see, our cursor is still working. But now if I start to select elements, it I am able to do that. So yes. Um, but when we hover over this text link, we can see that our cursor sort of comes back and we get that cursor again. So let's go fix that. I'm going to go into my H, uh, my main link here into my container and grab that sort of text link and make sure that my cursor is set to none. And now if we try, as you can see, no cursor showing up, we can still select stuff. Okay. So now let's wor get working on this sort of link hover effect that we have uh, sort of going on here. So I'm going to go in here to my text and I'll just make an interaction right now on mouse hover. So link hover in. And the first thing that we're going to do is get our cursor dot and reduce the opacity down fully. So that one just goes down. Um, and then I'm going to get my cursor uh, follower here and change that background color to be that orange that we had before. Then I'm going to change the opacity a little bit, maybe make it about 45%. Okay. And then um, I'm also going to scale it up. So maybe up to like 1.5. That's so enough. We check. Okay, so we need to go a lot faster, so I'm going to grab all of them. I'm just hitting one, grabbing shift until the end. Make it much shorter, so 0.2 seconds. And I'm going to pick ease in quad, so it happens really quickly. Maybe even less, 0.1. Let's see. Yep, okay, that looks good. Then we, we need one for when it hovers out, so I'll call this link hover out. And first thing is we're going to scale that back down to one, get rid of that background color. So just hit transparent here. And then uh, the opacity will go back up to 100. What else? And uh, the cursor dot will come back into play. So the opacity of the cursor dot will be 100% again. And I believe that's it. Let's hit save and let's try that out. Okay, it's working, perfect. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's it for um, this interaction. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below, like this video, subscribe, and that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.